Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So recently I posted a video where I explained, or did my best to explain, V-Carb Inlay. And in that video I said there were two important things that you needed to do for success, in my opinion. One was surfacing your wasteboard to make sure, to ensure that it is perfectly flat. The other was to tram your spindle. Now I have a little visual aid here as you can see, that'll help me explain what tramming is. Now tramming by my definition is router tilt. And what I mean by that is as the router runs on the machine, you want that router as close to 90 degrees to the surface as possible. So if your router is out of tram, it sits like this. Now that's an abstract, obviously it doesn't really sit that way, but that is kind of that helps to show you what I mean by being out of tram. Tram would be, correct tram would be 90 straight up and down. No tilt this way, that way, forward or back, and it will give you a much, much greater final product, better product. And that is especially important if you're doing V-carb inlays. Now I will, at the end of the video, leave a tag or a link that you can click onto for the V-carb inlay as well as the surfacing your wasteboard video. The first step in tramming is to surface your wasteboard so that it is dead flat. Don't concern yourself with the tramming issue. That doesn't matter when you're surfacing the wasteboard. So step one, if you haven't done it already, go watch the other video on surfacing your wasteboard. The thumbnail is a set of pancakes. It's kind of stupid, but it works for me. Secondly, the V-carb inlay will help you if you want to do wooden V-carb inlays. Then this video that I'm going to do right now and explain how you can make a simple tool to tram your CNC and get very, very good results. So let's get started. All right, so let's begin by making the device that actually measures for tram. Pretty simple. You're going to need a one inch by three quarter inch thick piece of pine. We're going to cut that pine 12 inches long. Let's do that now. And that 12 is just an arbitrary number. It doesn't have to be that exact, but 12 inches works pretty good on a machine that's got 30 inches of travel. And you'll see why later. But 12 and 12 is 24, just keep that in mind. Next, we're going to draw a center line down the center of this. I happen to have one of these fancy center finders. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to go in two inches on each end, like so two inches from each end and draw a cross line just like that. We're going to take it over to the drill press and we're going to drill a quarter inch hole on those marks. Now this hole will go all the way through from one side to the other. Alright, the next step is to draw a cross line three inches from the end, both sides. We're going to run the blade right down the center of this piece of wood to that mark. Again, this is not rocket science, you don't have to be that specific, but that will work well for you. Three quarters of an inch, half of that's three eighths. Let's cut it up. Okay, next step, we need a center line down here past, oh about to the hole, a little past it. We'll try to use the fancy tool again. Like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That gets us close. Let's go back to the old technique, the finger drag move. Alright. So what we're going to do with that line is we're now going to drill a hole from this side into that side, a pilot hole, because we need to put a screw here. Now we want to be as close to that hole as we can. Close to it is not really 
right on top of it. Let's back off a quarter of an inch or so. We can eyeball this. It doesn't need to be that precise. Pilot hole through. And that is the basis for our tramming tool. Let's go back over to the mill and we'll put it together. Okay, next step, we're gonna need a couple of screws, one inch long roughly to go all the way through. You're gonna need an old bit. You're not gonna to take this thing apart every time you use it. You can if you'd like, but if you have an old bit that's dull and you were gonna throw it away anyway, hold on to that, you're gonna need it. And I did forget a step earlier. We need to drill a through hole from this side halfway in so that the screw will pass through without restriction. So we take some blue tape, we put it on the edge of the wood, like so, to determine the depth, and we run the drill in. I'll do that now. Just like that, that way the screws will go in and hit the other side, good to go. All right, so slide the old bit in. What you wanna do is get it in there so that you are grabbing the shank as best you can. A little bit exposed is okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. And tighten that screw. What this is going to do is create a clamping effect on this bit and it now will not come out. We'll bring the machine forward, we'll remove the dust collection. As you can see I've got a V3 on here, V4. We need to remove the dust collection, slide that out of the way, we'll slide these arms up. We'll take another one quarter inch bit and we'll put it in the machine. Then we'll slide this half on as well, like so, onto the quarter inch bit that is in there after I bring it forward. Now obviously I've got to take the V bit out, but let's raise these arms, get them out of the way. We'll take the V bit out. Another little pointer for you, I call it the hand squeeze method. When you're tightening these collet nuts, one hand squeeze is enough if you have any hand strength to get them in there. Pull that out, we don't need it. We need another quarter inch bit. We'll put that in the collet. Tighten it up. Another little pointer, there's a button in the back here that locks this in. Do not get on that wrench holding that button or you'll snap the aluminum casting. I say that out of experience because I've done it. Hand squeeze snug. Now the object here is this portion of the bit should be over on the edge of the wood. So we need to have it in this orientation when we put it onto this bit. As you can see, these guys are going to be in the way unless I lower the spindle down. Let me back him up just a little bit. And we now slide this one onto this bit. Again, tightening it up. To create the pinch and I can see that I've gone too far with the screw drill bit on the first try so we'll get another longer bit another longer screw all right so I made a second one off camera because this hole I went way too deep on there was no no pinching that together, threw it away, started over, 
This takes me all of 10 minutes to make, no big deal. Remember that you want this bit that's in the collet extending down enough so that your device can grab the shoulder or the shank of your bit. You want it on the smooth portion as much as possible away from the flutes. When you have it right, this will not move up and down much at all on this end. Let's back this up a little bit. And I'll share with you the concept here of what we're trying to accomplish. So here's the basic setup. A long arm accentuates the amount of twist that you're going to have on this end as opposed to how much you're going to have right here in this bit. By that I mean the little bit that this is twisted is greater here than it is here to here. So the object is to take the bit on this side and drop it down so that it just touches the surface of your wasteboard. Again, this is after you have um, surfaced the wasteboard and you've got it completely flat. So now we have the bit just touching. When you rotate this around, it should be just touching on this side. There can be a great variance in that and this side will be up in the air, that side will be touching. To correct this, let me zoom in on these screws here. You will loosen, there are four screws that hold this in place. You will loosen this screw, that screw, and there's two that match it on the other side. Loosen up three of them, and you will twist this left or right until you have achieved the desired effect. So micro adjustments, small adjustments, tighten it back up, spin this around back and forth until you're just touching on both sides. Then we start working front to back. Back the camera back out so that you can see that. We'll begin working front, rotating this to the back. The way that adjustment is corrected is, let me move the camera, that's adjusted by loosening this screw, that screw, that screw, and that screw. Don't loosen them all, loosen just three. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Loosen three of these four on both sides. Then, let me move the camera once more. After you have those loose, you're gonna need a little leverage to pry this up and down with. So we'll attach a clamp to this bar, works very well. Be careful not to grab the wires in the back side with your clamp. Again, loosen the three screws and you will simply pry up and down using the handle for leverage you will pry up and down to twist that bar until again we're just touching on this side and just touching on the front okay so I hope that helped you learn or helped you in some way figure out how you tram your device now there's another thing that you can do if you want to be even more accurate. You can attach one of these guys to your bar that runs back and forth. Little dial indicator touches the surface. Not, not too difficult to figure out. Touch the surface, turn the dial to zero, spin the bar around and read the measurement. Then divide by two and adjust your spindle accordingly until you stay at zero all the way around or as close to it as you can. Now these little guys came from the jungle store. They're made by Wen and in the case of the Shapoko, I don't suppose it's the same at all, but in the case of the Shapoko, when this thing rises up a little bit, this post, it won't go underneath the bar. So I took it over to the old disc sander and we modified the top just a little bit. If you can see these two tops together, you can see that this one here is way narrower or way shorter than this side. And I did that until I was able to just slide it underneath the axis and it fits. And this is the one that I made and it stays in here so I never have to change it again. 
But anyway, y'all, that's how you tram your Shapoko or any other CNC that's out there. The concept is the same. You twist it until it gets into the correct alignment on all axes. I hope that helps somebody in some way. I hope you got something out of this video. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll catch you on the next one.